In our country, uh, religion plays a major role in our society. It's very strong. You hear so much about the Christian right and evangelical movement and so forth. How does this fit into your scheme of things, the strong religious fever of a part of the American population, the Christian right, versus, let's say, England? Well, religion, uh, religion is definitely dead in England, really. Um, although there's a small revival in the slums, particularly of Pentecostal-type churches, where if you go into them, you will see that people are seeking an answer to their own, to the disorder and the misery around them. Often, if you speak to them, they've had someone uh, badly injured in an attack or something like that. Um, uh, so I, I do think that religion plays a, a, strong, uh, a strong part in keeping society together. Uh, I find it quite difficult, a difficult question for me because I'm not religious. Um, but nevertheless, I, I think religion does play an in, a very large part in uh, keeping people together, although also I think... Uh, I, when I look at uh, a lot of American religion, I wonder what it actually means inside people. I mean, I, I do wonder what they actually do believe and how much it affects them. But, but I think um, certainly I would prefer a, a religious, uh, a more religious society in England, but I don't see how it's going to happen. Oh, well, I, let me see into it. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with all your work. Have you written on the single-payer system in uh, the medical care and the related calls in this country to make the pharmaceutical industry an arm of the federal government? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, I didn't know that anyone had suggested that the pharmaceutical uh, industry should be uh, an arm of the federal government. I, I'd never, I haven't heard that. Yes, I can talk about the NHS, uh, but that would be very boring. <laughs> There's been uh, quite a bit in the media of late about uh, uh, class in, Amer in America, uh, and the, uh, uh, the lack of mobility among classes, among generations. I wonder what your view of it is, and I wonder what your view of the discussion of class is almost purely a function of economics and less so of morality or cultivation or football fanship um, and, and how those things fit together for you and how you think America is progressing versus Europe. Well, class is a difficult, uh, very difficult subject in England because what is very striking about England is that it has traditionally been one of the most mobile societies in the world and yet everyone thinks that it is a uh, rigidly uh, a very class ridden society and what they mistake is a class society for a caste society uh, and the fact is that uh, as I said it's been a very it's been, uh, certainly in Europe, the most socially mobile society um, that there is, and it's uh, only America, I think, is, is more uh, socially mobile. Uh, what, what there was in Britain, of course, was an attractive, uh, an upper class that was attractive to people who were striving, and as soon as they uh, did well, they, they joined the upper class, or their children joined the upper class, so that if you... Uh, you look at upper class people, very many of them, uh, only a couple of generations ago, um, came from uh, very humble circumstances. Uh, but unfortunately, people's idea is uh, that this very mobile society was actually a caste society and that you were destined to live in the caste in which you were born. And this was a complete misapprehension uh, of our society. But because that was the apprehension, a, s a certain number of so-called egalitarian measures were put in place, which actually have made social mobility more difficult. So Britain is now a less socially mobile uh, country than it was when it was supposedly class-ridden. Uh, for example, the educational system now offers people in uh, the lower classes almost no means of uh, getting out of, uh, of, uh, out of their, out of their uh, rising above their class. 
I don't know whether that's happened in the United States, but I believe that the United States has become slightly less mobile than it was. And I would imagine that the same kind of social, egalitarian social engineering I is responsible for that. A follow up on that. Uh, are you saying that the. Hang on for the mic here. Huh. Uh, are you saying that the decisions that were made to open uh, Eton and Harrow and Oxford and Cambridge uh, to people of lower income groups has not had a an enhanced effect in terms of mobility? No, there are now fewer of the lower class in, in Oxford and Cambridge than there were before they made any attempts to uh, recruit them. <laughs> yeah. all, 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 in Britain, all policies produce the opposite effect to those intended. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> yes, sir. Where? Yes. Uh, there are some of us, maybe I'm in a minority, who are not familiar with your work. Your title is very provocative, Our Society and What's Left of It. Uh, is this something where we have some culture, sorry, culture, and we are going to be uh, losing it? Is there a call to action, or uh, what happens? I don't see a, uh, an, enough about what the book might be about. Yeah for me to go to read it. Could you kind of uh, um, sell well, it a little bit? Yeah. What, <laughs> <laughs> what, one of the things, uh, uh, one of the things that has happened in, in, in our society is that people have been disconnected from any of the past culture, I mean the high culture, so that it is deliberately not taught. And uh, uh, and this is to, in my view, has the effect, whether it was uh, deliberate or not, I'm not sure, but it, it has certainly had the effect of um, making people live in an eternal present moment where life is just one thing after another. And I, in the book, I try to uh, discuss the connection between our cultural, uh, our loss of, uh, of cultural uh, identity uh, with the social breakdown that... that that to me is perfectly obvious uh, in Britain, and no doubt in other societies as well. Just to follow on, David Reisman and uh, the lonely crowd, um, are we getting less inner-directed? Are we getting more outer-directed? Versus, of course, tradition-directed. Well, I think we're, we're yeah. I think we are um, increasingly, in Britain anyway, people are solipsists. And you can see this, uh, I mean, uh, for example, the number of people living in one-person households has dramatically increased, which is one of the reasons why uh, uh, there's so much pressure on housing, incidentally. Um, that's one thing. If you, I don't expect you've ever done this, but if you go into uh, what are called nightclubs, in my childhood I remember nightclubs were sort of tables with uh, little lamps and people performing on the stage in a slightly louche way. Um, <laughs> but now they are giant halls where uh, 10,000 uh, people go. The music is so loud uh, that no speech is possible. And if you actually observe people dancing, they're dancing with themselves. And they, they don't actually socialize in any way at all. They gather but do not socialize. And uh, so on the one hand, uh, we see a kind of, if you like, massification. And on the other hand, we see an atomization at the same time. Uh, and this is uh, very noticeable, certainly in Britain. 